Okay, for this third installment, and I say third because you should see the first two before you get to this, we're going to deal with how to form in a little bit more advanced ways. Now, if you've seen the first two, you'll notice that I'm actually using the system that we're trying to send out to you. Um, there's a few advantages to this, one being that cool zone on the end where you can still handle the bender if you need to when it's plugged in which can be very useful so sliding long, small gauge pipes on, it helps. You can also lift it at this end, and it's the same thing. Anywhere in between, you really don't want to touch that for any reason. It is really, really hot. Now, if you're using a small gauge pipe, like a half inch, you're going to have to kind of wrestle it on there. And for that, we include the hot tool, and these are as useful as you make them, really. I don't use it too much myself, but one big trick about the hot tool is you don't really want to clip it onto the pipe. What you want to do is just kind of use it to pull down the bender, and that would be for as you're wiggling a piece of pipe on here. And in that way, it can make your life a lot easier. You won't get burned. Now, I personally don't use it too much, but I also personally don't bend that much small pipe, so that kind of helps me out. Moving on, though, what I'd like to get into is how to do a more complicated form than the build-a-bend system allows. This right here is Formica, the end strips for putting together countertops. It works great. You can use other things like bendy board, uh, thin flexible plywoods and things like that. This is just what we chose to use. But hot glue down to make the shape of a camp chair. Now, it, what we're making it into is not really that important because honestly I'm just trying to show the principle, another principle for me. So we'll get into how to use this right now. What I have here is 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. This, even though it's dyed green, is in any other way exactly the same as the PVC pipe you'll get at the hardware store. And, I mean, it's polyvinyl chloride with a little bit of dye, and that's the only difference. But what you'll do is put this on the bender. Close the bend stations. And this clip that we provide is just to hold it shut. These things kind of like to spring open. And wait a few minutes. As with anything on this, you're going to want to turn the pipe quite a bit. And there's a few reasons for that. One is to keep you from burning any part of the inside of it to try to keep the inside of the pipe smooth. And another reason is so that you can tell by touch when the pipe is actually ready to bend. And you'll need to experiment a little bit. You're not going to know the first time what perfect means, but after you've done this a few times, you'll get there is one consistency that you'll learn. And at that consistency, the pipe will do pretty much anything within its limitations. It's wonderful. One thing that is really important, that like we've repeat a thousand times, is you need to put on your gloves before taking the pipe off the bender. This is very hot, and it's the kind of temperature that is almost comfortable to the touch, but it will burn right through you, so make sure to put your gloves on before taking the pipe off. In this case, what you do drop it down into the form and then compress it lengthwise to make it fit the curve that you're trying to make. And this right here is the major drawback of this forming system is that while the build-a-bend is completely hands-free, you can click it down and walk away. With this sort of a form, you've got to babysit it. You do have to stay on it. And there's ways to avoid it. You can stick pipe in and clamp it down and all of that. But then you have to account for that, and you have to leave a little bit more room on your cutoff zone to make that happen. So, it will be a few minutes, and this will be 
just as solid as it was originally. You can see that this kind of form takes a little bit more patience than the Build-A-Bend system, but you'll be able to see here in a very short while that the advantages of this type of forming do compete with the drawbacks, definitely. You're allowed for a lot, lot different things here, where the Build-A-Bend system is perfect for a single extended curve. This is great. Once you start making bizarre shapes, it is really cool. Now at this stage, the, it remembers the shape well enough that I can take my hands off of it, but it's still a bit early to remove it from the form. The pipe is slightly flexible, so what I'm going to do is wet it down with a sponge. And that really, really improves the cooling time a lot on this. So what we have here is the profile of a camp chair. And again, this, the exact use is not that important for what we're doing right now, but it does show how you're able to make a very subtle curve on either side. And th these are things that would be very difficult to do with the build event system because you couldn't even actually see it. I mean, you're making a dotted line out of something, it's really hard to make something so small without having it run jagged on you. So, when you get to making more interesting shapes, this sort of forming system is definitely the way to go. And the last thing I'll do, of course, is to mark it for cutting. Because just like the Build-A-Bend system, it's difficult enough to worry about the length of such a strange shape. And at the same time, sometimes when you do a bend, you'll notice the end of the pipe gets a little bit messed up. That's just from taking it off the bender while it's so soft it'll kind of rub up against it. And if you cut these off and throw them away, then what you're left with is perfect, perfect pieces of perfect edges.